Welcome to the Manufacturing Supply Chain Forum. Today's talk is on the economic order quantity, so that's otherwise known as the EOQ. The EOQ describes the relationship between um, three things. So the first is the cost of setups in a manufacturing environment or the cost of placing orders for purchased products. Um, secondly, the cost of carrying inventory and the order quantity. So the, um, the economic order quantity uh, looks at these three um, elements to find um, the optimal amount. Now, um, for W. Harris was credited with creating the economic order quantity in 1913. And uh, when he wrote his paper then, he used the example of a metal workshop that produces copper connections to demonstrate the trade-off between carrying cost and order cost. So each time the, the shop changed from one type of connector to another, the machines had to be adjusted and materials were wasted in tests. So Harris defined this labour and materials cost to produce a new connection as the setup cost. Um, if this connection had been purchased instead of manufactured, the problem's the same, but instead of a setup cost, would have the cost of placing a purchase order. Okay, so let's go through some of the EOQ assumptions. So let's go down here. Assumptions. So the first assumption that we have for an EOQ model is that production is instantaneous is instantaneous now this means that there are no capacity constraints that the entire lot is produced um, all at once our second assumption number two is that our delivery product that we make is immediate. So if we manufacture the product, the delivery to the customer is immediate, or if we, uh, if we purchase the product, then de the delivery is immediate. The third assumption that we have is that demand is known or otherwise it's deterministic so there's no uncertainty about the quantity or timing of demand we also assume that demand is constant over time And lastly, we assume that production incurs a fixed setup cost in a manufacturing environment. So production incurs a fixed setup cost. So regardless of the size of the lot, the setup cost is the same. So the result of these assumptions is an inventory model. If we quickly do a sketch, where on the y-axis we have the inventory units. And let's draw a dotted line here representing a order amount Q. Then we have our sawtooth. So our product is consumed, you either produce it and it occurs simultaneous, simul occurs immediate, immediately, and then it's consumed once again, it's produced, and delivery is immediate, and so forth, and we get this sawtooth pattern. This is inventory units, the x-axis is time. 
We also note that our period of time in this model here is governed by Q divided by D, where Q is our lot size and D is our total demand. So each period in between these two points is governed by Q on D. Okay, so now let's have a look at some notation. So this is notation. The first piece we've mentioned before, D, is our demand. And this is given in units per year. A is our fixed setup cost. It's our order cost in a purchase environment. So it's either the costs, fixed setup cost to produce or the order cost to purchase. A lot. And this is given in terms of dollars per lot. Okay, our next term is little r, where r is the carrying cost. And these are in slightly funny units in terms it's given in dollars per dollars held per time. Now before we move on, just to note that the carrying cost is made up of four parts. It's made up of the cost of capital, which is the cost to get financing. It's made up of also storage costs to hold the inventory, such as warehousing costs. There's an element for any damage or obsolescence. And lastly, there's some insurance element there as well. Now, these factors all roll up into one number called a carrying cost. Now, our next term is V, little v. And this is our variable purchase cost, given as dollars per unit. We then have Q, which we mentioned before, which is our order quantity which is what we're trying to solve. And T we saw before as our order cycle time. So order cycle time given in time per order. Now reviewing all these variables that we'll be looking at in the EOQ, the the most challenging to actually calculate when uh, when you do this is to find this A value, which is either your, your fixed, as we said before, our fixed setup cost to produce the item or the, uh, the cost to um, place an order for a purchased item. So this is probably one of the, the hardest things to find and the, uh, the, the quality of the data we put in is obviously um, indicative of how useful our answer becomes. Carrying cost as well can be tricky just because it's made up of these little components and we need to roll it all into one. But generally we can, uh, if we are systematic and go through these, we can come up with, with something that's, uh, that's, reasonably, that's reasonably accurate. Okay. 
So next we're going to have a look at how to um, derive the um, economic order quantity equation. So when we look at total cost, we add up three components. There's the, the purchase component, there's the um, ordering or uh, set up cost component and the holding cost. Now mathematically we can represent this as our little vd plus a times d on q plus rv q on 2 if we remember our definitions we saw before. So when we plot this we get a, a total cost line which is the black line there um, that represents this entire equation. Now if we look at just this part here, the order cost, that looks like this line going down across here. This is our order cost. Our carrying cost, which is this part here, you can see it's Q on 2, which is our average inventory times R times V, give us our carrying cost, and that's a straight line that goes through there. Now, our EOQ turns out to be the intersection of these two points here. So when the order cost equals the holding cost, we minimize our total cost, the EOQ. Also notice that with the total cost function that it's relatively flat on the bottom here. So if we don't get the exact amount, if we're wrong by a little, to the little to the left or the right, the total cost does not impact the entire solution significantly. So that's just something to to have a think about that this flatness of the bottom um, for the EOQ um, total cost function. Okay, so the uh, we could, could go through deriving the uh, um, the um, this point here, which is essentially the derivative of this equation. So if we set the derivative of this equal to zero, then we'll get our EOQ answer. And so we won't go through all of it, but if we set um, DTC, the total cost with respect to Q, and we solve this, uh, which becomes minus AD on Q squared, plus VR on 2. If we set this all equal to 0, then we get our EOQ equation, which becomes solving all the way through there, we get the square root of 2AD on VR. So this is our EOQ equation.